Hello folks, Paul Phillips here with GE Learning and Development. In this video, we'll be taking a look at P40 Agile Enhanced 103 generic configuration. Starting with device setup, we're going to look at the real-time clock, security, communications including the IP address setup, disturbance recorder, data logger, fault records, event data, flex states, front panel settings, programmable LEDs, language selections, resetting, installation, and clear records. In section two under system setup, we're gonna look at CT ratio, VT ratio, power system settings, circuit breaker status inputs, setup of 52 A and B switches, user curves data, how to import standard time over current, uh, inverse curve into flex curve, how to generate CSV files for the flex curve and import them, and how to use the formula to create your own curves. In section three, under inputs, we'll look at opto inputs, virtual inputs, and remote inputs. In section four, under outputs, we'll look at relay outputs, virtual outputs, and lastly, remote outputs. Under FlexLogic operands, we'll show you the complete FlexLogic operands list and their categories. Lastly, we'll do a recap of everything we've covered in this module. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn this over to our PNC instructor, Mr. Lixendu. There are 12 settings under device setup we are covered in this section. Depends on the setup, we'll have different depths of the introduction. For some topics like security and communication, there'll be more detailed introduction in the future modules. In the date and the time, there are three settings, PTP, Clock, and SNTP. The PTP is a new settings in the version 2 of the P40 RGL Enhanced. Under security, we'll introduce the basic settings of the security. There will be more detailed introduction in the future for advanced cybersecurity settings. Communications will cover the Mudbus, RS-485, Ethernet port, and the USB settings. And for the other settings, will be covered in the future 107 IEC 61850 modules or communication module. Disturbance recorder. In the 102 module, we already showed how to download COM treat waveform from the relay. And here, we we'll introduce the setting of how the waveforms are captured and settings of the digital and analog channels. Data logger. The data logger samples and records up to 16 analog parameters are the read defined by the user. All data is stored in a non-volatile memory where the information will be retained upon relay control power lost. The difference with the disturbance recorder is that uh, the data logger is used to measure a much longer time duration, for example, the overnight the voltage fluctuation. Fault records. In the relay, fault records, it supports up to 25 fault reports and associated fault locator before overwriting the oldest one. The trigger condition and characteristics of the feature as well as the analog quantities to be stored are entered in this manual. Event data. The relay is able to capture a maximum of 2048 records. And for each event record, the date event data feature stores up to 64 flex analog quantities each time on event occurs. Flex state. The flex state feature provides a mechanism where any 256 selected flex logic operand states saved into a 16 Mudbus registers starting from address 3BX. Front panel, here we'll introduce the programmable LED5 to LED8 and display properties and display time under the default screen. Resetting, the front panel LED can be reset by pressing the C button or using the three operands as the input set here. Installation. It is mainly used to set the relay in service 
or out of the service and we'll also introduce other settings. Clear records. In the training modules 102, we introduced under the monitoring, there's a clear records command. We can use that clear out record and here we can preset the flag operands to clear the records. Unlike the MyCom P40 relays, the events has to be cleared by removing the battery or refresh the firmware. Now I got one P40 RGL relay connected uh, with the NVista Flex software. So let's open the settings under device. And under the date and the time, we have three settings, PTP, clock, and SNTP. Uh, this PTP clock is the new settings from the version two and we can enable PTP here and also make sure that the dom domain setting below should match to the domain setting from the clock. For example, the Reason RT430 clock. Because P40 RGL Enhanced does not support VLAN, so the VLAN setting should be unchecked. P40 RGL support IEEE C37.238 and IEC 61850-9-3 PTP protocols. Under the clock setting, we can manually set the date and the time, and we can also uh, using this sync device to computer button to sync the relay time with the PC time but the time will drift after a certain time. So the better ways to use the a PTP signal or the Eric B signal to get a more accurate time. The Eric B port, which is the shared port with the RS485, and that was introduced in the 101 hardware modules. And the DST, that stands for daylight saving time. That's all that uh, related uh, settings. When both uh, PTP and uh, Eric B signals available, so there's one setting under sync source priorities. We can choose, uh, you prefer to use a PTP signal or the Eric B signal. When clock is uh, properly configured, then the PTP status will display synchronized and the grand clock ID can be seen from the really front panel and also the software. SNTP stands for Simple Network Time Protocol. When it's used which is used to, to synchronize the clocks of the computer system over packet switched variable latency date network, such as IP, relays accept time synchronization from up to two different SNTP servers. If the SNTP server uh, used to synchronize the relay, then the IP and uh, UDP port for the main server must be configured along with the SNTP server 2 IP and UDP port for the backup server. Security has the basic security and advanced cyber security settings for the server configuration and the syslog uh, config two options based on the order code. And we'll talk more about the details in the security modules. And here we just need to know there is a bypass uh, access control settings. This allows you to bypass the security authentication. For example, if the bypass is set to HMI only, then there's no user authentication is needed to change the settings or reset the LED. If the user select the local, then no user authentication is needed for accessing over USB or HMI interface. Under communication, there are many settings 
and uh, we are going to talk most of them in the future either IEC 61850 modules, all the communication module, and here we'll just uh, briefly uh, introduce the MADBUS RS485 and the IP addresses in the Ethernet and the USB. So for the MADBUS, there's a setting you can enable and set the uh, slave port and the TCP port. For the RS485 port, as we mentioned, this is the shared uh, uh, port with uh, Eric B, and uh, this need to be disabled if you want to use that port for the uh, Eric B, vice versa. If you disable Eric B, then you can enable this uh, to be a RS485. And uh, for this port, you can set the baud rate and also to select uh, the protocols. So we can choose uh, Mudbus, IEC 103, or DMP3 three protocols. And uh, in the offline settings, uh, if uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the Ethernet uh, IP address. And now I'm in the online mode, but if you're in the offline uh, setting file, uh, with no really connected, uh, the the changing of the IP address is depends on that uh, uh, preference setting. There's a, a setting preference. You can uh, have this uh, edit communication settings in the offline device. If it, this is unchecked, that means the uh, IP address will be grayed out. So you cannot change this IP address in the offline device. So now I'm in the online mode, so I can change and I'm connected by the USB uh, cable. So that's, uh, I can change the IP address by USB cable. And now we have this uh, another setting for the uh, USB port. And you can s see this is the IP address uh, of this uh, USB. And this is a good uh, way to troubleshoot when you do the quick connect if this IP uh, is not uh, using the default, so you can check, make sure they are using the default. Otherwise, uh, you can manually change this to default, or you can change another different IP address just to match to uh, what you are uh, configured in the network uh, uh, properties. And uh, this is a demo relay with the only uh, uh, one uh, Ethernet port. Uh, if you have a relay with the uh, release two, uh, version two have a three ports order code, then you, you should be able to see the uh, three IP address settings and the plus one redundancy setting. Now let's open the disturbance record. On the disturbance uh, recorder, uh, as we introduced to the in the modules 102, how to retrieve the really captured waveform. And here is the setting, how this uh, waveform you want to capture. Um, for the numbers of the records, we can choose maximum up to 16 records. And the length of each record varies based on the number of the records, the sample read, and the number selected the channels of the analog and the uh, digital. There's a fixed amount of data storage for the disturbance record. The more data captured, the less number of the cycles captured per record. The sample read uh, can be set um, up to 128. Uh, maximum uh, sample per cycle, and it can be also set less to eight uh, per cycle. So if the user want to save a longer waveform, for example, like the four shots or to reclose, then uh, it will be better just to, to use a smaller number of the record. For example, you can just uh, manually type in and uh, to choose also a lower read of the sample read. So this way you can save a much longer uh, waveform. The trigger mode 
uh, can be set into the overwrite and uh, protect it. The default setting is overwrite, which means the new records overwrite the old records. So really always keep the latest records. When set to protected, so really only keep into the preset number of the records. And the trigger position, you can choose uh, how much uh, pre-fault and how much is the, the post-fault. For example, we can s using the default 20% pre-fault or set to 50% uh, pre-fault, half and half, pre-fault and fault, or we can choose more pre-fault, uh, less post-fault, 80% at the trigger uh, position. And uh, typically, 20% uh, is uh, good for most of the applications. Now, this uh, trigger source um, will let you choose uh, what causing the trigger um, the trigger can be, of course, can be set by on any start. That means pick up, operate, trip, alarm, but also can be specifically uh, assigned one flex operand. And here is the first time we see that the, the uh, long list of this um, uh, flex logic operands. There's over a thousand um, operands and we're going to talk uh, in the next session about the this uh, operands but uh, just uh, let you know that uh, here you can just uh, choose any operands to trigger this waveform not necessary to be just a fault this can be just triggered by uh, opto input that's the contact input so this is the very flexible you can trigger this uh, waveform and also we can select the digital channels and each uh, uh, of these uh, channels um, up to 64 you can you choose that to pull down list of the flex operand and there's also 16 uh, analog channels so you can choose that's all the settings within this disturbance recorder But the data logger, it is used to, to save a much longer period of an analog fluctuation. And this mode can be set into continuous or triggered. In the continuous mode, the logger will start recording configured analog values immediately after the configuration. In the trigger mode, only the preset flex logic operand asserted, then the data logger will start recording. And in this mode, data logger ignores all subsequent triggers and continues to record data until the active record is full. Once the data log is full, a clear data logger command is required to clear the data logger record. So in this way, then you can uh, start recording the new data logger record. And here you can choose the sample read from one cycle up to 24 hours. And also the select the source. And for example, in uh, I preset uh, C CT1 uh, current uh, IC and IA and I can see this uh, uh, in the events when there's uh, I can see the fluctuation if I inject this uh, for uh, a certain period of time and the retrieving of the data logger is same like uh, you retrieving the the waveform under the records here okay so that's the data record and the for the fault records and this uh, sub, uh, P40 Agile enhanced uh, supports up to 25 uh, fault reports and associated fault locator before overwriting the oldest one the trigger conditions 
and the characteristic of the feeder, as well as the analog quantities to be stored and configured in this uh, setting menu. Uh, event data. So this uh, event data features stores to uh, 64 analog values. And every time there is a uh, event occurs, the, the preset parameter will be saved. So for example, I got a, a current CT1IC save, saved. If I choose uh, CT1IC current program in this parameter, then once there's a trip and uh, get event, I can see these uh, values displayed in the event record. Okay, flex uh, state. So flex state, uh, these features give you to uh, provide a mechanism where 256 selected uh, flex logic operand uh, state or inputs can be monitored in 16 Modbus registers from address 3B5 in hex or 949 in decimal. So for example, if we set the parameter uh, 123 all to on, that's the binary number uh, 111 and it's the decimal number of seven, if we read the Modbus address uh, 3B5, we should be able to get uh, 7. And if we set uh, number 4 also to on and read the same Modbus address, then we should uh, get uh, 15, and which is the binary number 1111. So that's the use of uh, uh, 16 uh, registers, so from parameter 1 to parameter 16, that's the first uh, register 3B5, then from 17, uh, Modbus will become 3B6, so far so on. On the front panel, we have the settings of the programmable LED uh, 5 to 8, and also the setting of the language display properties. In the version one, the LED color is programmed directly with only one setting. And from here, I have the software is version two and the separate trigger for the red and the green. When you need the orange color, you can just uh, assert both red and the green, you will get the orange color. And for the languages, uh, this uh, version 2 support uh, uh, US, UK, uh, English, Spanish, French, Russian, and Turkish six languages. This can be uh, choose from the, the profile under the uh, device. All this can be selected uh, from the front panel. Once it's selected either from the profile or from the front panel, when you open the display properties, this language is agreed out. And here is the select of the language under the, the profile, um, the device language. Okay, so that's the setting of the front panel. Um, resetting. Uh, for the resetting, we can choose uh, three um, uh, flex logic operands to reset. Instead of using the front panel, pressing the C button to reset, we can um, press the C if we log in as administrator, um, or we can set on the bypass. Both will work if I press the C. Or another way you can just uh, using an um, operand. So for example, the f um, up to input. And in this way, I don't need to, to 
login as administrator, I can just use the opto input to, to reset the, uh, the relay, for example, the trip LED. Uh, under installation, we can set the device name and uh, select the relay in service and set the parameter and the cutoff. Uh, the relay name here uh, we can set, but uh, but this relay name will not be shown in the uh, CID file as the IED name in the CID file. The IED name in the CID file is coming from the device name you programmed under the project. And uh, for the device in service, you can set uh, ready and not ready. When it's set not ready, the out of service will light will turn to red and the green healthy LED will be off. When set to ready, then out of service red light will be off and healthy LED will be turned on to green. And we can also choose the temperature uh, unit uh, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and uh, current voltage cutoff. The current cutoff unit is uh, in PU per unit. That depends on your selected um, nominal secondary current to be 1 amp or 5 amps CT. The car, uh, voltage cutoff is always in the volts. Last, not least, under the device setting, that's the clear records. Um, we can clear records by using the, the command, and also we can, using this uh, preset uh, flex uh, logic operand to clear all records, a certain type of records for a certain uh, um, specific application. Um, if you generate too much records for either data logger or demand, you just want to constantly clear, you can use a uh, flex logic to set here and uh, to clear the, the record. In the system setup, we'll introduce the settings of the CT ratio, VT ratio, including the connections, power system, nominal frequency and the phase rotation, CV setup, the setup of 52A and the 52B inputs, user curves, how to program customer flexible curve. Under the system, CT ratios, we can enter the CT primary or the ground primary current up to 30,000 amps. And since P40 RGL enhanced has the universal uh, secondary CT input, so you can choose the CT secondary to be 1 amp or 5 amp. For the VT ratio, we can choose the input to be Y or delta, and here the menu shows the star, that's for the Y connection or the delta connection, or sometimes we call the triangle connection. Uh, that's for the VT input, then you can uh, make sure that there is a root 3 relationship when you're converting the secondary uh, from Y to delta. So for example, on a system of 13.8 kilovolts nominal primary voltage and uh, uh, 14.3 kV to 120 volts VT in the delta connection, then the VT ratio should be 120. The secondary uh, voltage should be uh, 115. For the Y connection, the voltage values entered must be the phase to neutral voltage, which should be 66, uh, 66.4 volts. In the auxiliary uh, voltage, you can choose the seven inputs from this uh, pull-down list, and also there's a, 
uh, setting of the primary and uh, secondary voltage. And typically, this uh, auxiliary voltage is uh, used for the synchro check in the uh, of the line VT. Are you using the main VT for the bus and line VT for the auxiliary VT? Under power system, we can set the nominal uh, frequency to be 50 or 60 hertz. When a valid frequency tracking is not available, this nominal frequency will be used as the default to set the digital sample rate. The phase rotation can be set into standard ABC or reverse ACB. For the CB setup, we can set the status input to be 52A or B only or both 52A and B. And if you uh, set both 52 and A and B, make sure that uh, the two status uh, should be always uh, uh, opposite, the input one and input two. Otherwise, you'll get uh, the invalid uh, uh, status uh, CB status uh, target message. And now I'm using RTT test to simulate the breaker open and close. And then we can check this uh, status under the, the monitor. So I'm going to save it and check the status under monitor. So now I'm turning on the up to input one on and up to input two off and we can check the status first. Then we should be able to see the um, really device status. And we can see here under device status, we see this CB is closed. Now if I turn off, the up to input one and turn on the uh, up to input two, we can see this status changed into the CB tripped. Under the user curve data, we have four curves we can program, curve one to four. Uh, if we open the curve one, we have two ways to build the curve. One is using the existing curve and initialize from existing curve and uh, apply click apply data and this uh, curve is built here and you can export this uh, into excel uh, csv file and further uh, edit and then import back and there's another way we can use the uh, formula equations this is the two examples and here we got one example is for the uh, SEL US curve. So when we need to coordinate with the uh, other really manufacturer, for example, the Schweitzer SEL curve, uh, there's uh, four US curve, only the US uh, curve number two has the same equation with the P40 RGL uh, enhanced US inverse curve. For the other curve, we need uh, to enter the equations here. So this is the equations for the uh, US curve number one. So once we type in these equations here, we uh, set the constant timestamp to be a thousand to convert this into the milliseconds. And then we can see the theoretical time, for example, the uh, multiple of uh, two. Uh, actually, let me apply this curve first. Okay. So now the uh, multiply of two is a 768 um, milliseconds. That's match exactly to the uh, Excel calculation. And we can also calculate the uh, multiple of three. That's uh, 491 milliseconds. So, so now we have a curve, have exactly the same with the US curve one. If uh, you save this uh, to be a curve, uh, to be uh, the curve one to be the US curve. You can make a, a note. And later, when you go to the face IOC, um, 
curve selection under the curve if you pick uh, you got user curve number one actually you already got a uh, US uh, curve number one and this curve can be used uh, to coordinate with the other really manufacturers uh, really cheap curve in this session we'll introduce the three types of the inputs the hardwired optically isolated inputs the opto inputs the software switch virtual inputs and IEC 61850 goose remote inputs the opto inputs is under inputs and uh, it has the setting uh, for this relay um, have uh, 11 inputs according to the order code maximum can be 14 uh, inputs as we introduced before and there is one global nominal voltage and which you have a uh, five voltage can choose 24 30 48 110 and 220 volts um, this is the threshold voltage should be close to the nominal DC battery voltage in the substation to avoid uh, substation interference false triggering so for example I'm going to set just uh, here 24 uh, for my demonstration and the characteristic you have a standard 80 percent 75 and 70 uh, percent so this give you a setting uh, a fluctuation range of the threshold so in th the demo I'm using um, 24 volts uh, RTT to apply it so that's a uh, 24 volt threshold sh should work but if I uh, even use this uh, uh, 24 volts DC supply I set the 30 volts and uh, weighs the 80% fluctuation and that should also uh, work that's still in the range of this uh, uh, DC uh, threshold and go to the opto inputs and we can see the first opto inputs status is on so if we turn off this uh, uh, switch from the RTT it's being shows off and on again so second we can turn on again and the third we can turn on so that's all three uh, inputs we wired from the opto inputs and uh, each uh, opto inputs can be renamed uh, for example we can call this uh, 52 a or 52 B for the breaker status inputs and there's a setting for the debounce time and the setting range for this is the maximum up to uh, 50 milliseconds this uh, debounce time is the minimum required closing time to acknowledge that input is asserted to prevent that the false uh, operation for example the the chattering of the contact and the debounce time is set to uh, 10 milliseconds so that's uh, for the opto input and the second input is a virtual input and we introduce there's a totally 128 virtual input And by default, all the virtual input functions are disabled. We can see that uh, this can be enabled, and every virtual input must be enabled before it can be operated either from the command or from the communication protocols. And each uh, name can be renamed. For example, I can rename this virtual input one to call the closed circuit breaker if I uh, enable the second one I can close open the breaker open CB or open the breaker and uh, for the the type of the virtual input that uh, can be set to uh, latched or self reset when self set 
to latched its status will stay in its status until changed by the command again. If set to self reset, then the output will be turned on for only a pause of one protection pass. That's about tw two milliseconds. And this pause can be extended by using the PSL timer, which will be covered in the training modules 106 on the PSL uh, programmable scheme logic. There are 128 uh, remote input is uh, under the setting of the device, communication, and uh, goose subs uh, subscribe. There's a remote inputs. So we can see the each uh, remote inputs have the setting for the name. You can call this uh, to be a upstream, a downstream, a trip, uh, or whatever blocking signal transfer trip etc and uh, there's a status uh, for default uh, state of on latest of and on so the difference is that if you set this uh, to on that values will set input uh, to logic one if set to off this will be default the input to logic zero set to the latest on that frees the input in case of lost connection. If the latest stata status is unknown, such as uh, after the relay powering up, but before the first communication, then the input defaults to logic one. When the communication resumes, the input becomes fully operational. Uh, same way if you set to the latest uh, off, that means it freezes the input in case of the uh, in, in case of lost communication. Then the latest status unknown. So for for example, the when powering up the relay, but before the first communication, the default is set to uh, logic zero, and when the communication resumes, the input become fully operational. So that's the false status uh, of the default. A state and uh, all these uh, remote inputs we have, have more uh, introduction and demonstration in the training modules 107 uh, IEC 61850 uh, module in the output session we'll introduce three types of outputs the hardware relay outputs to trip or close the circuit breaker or operate other devices, the output of the PSL virtual outputs, and the IEC 61850 GOOSE remote outputs. For the relay outputs, we know that there are maximum 11 outputs from the relay output menu, and here we can see the total number is 12. At the bottom, this is the relay output 12. And the, re the reason is that if you go to in the middle, we see that the relay 8 uh, is missing. That's the normally closed uh, contact as a watchdog, and that's not configurable in the output setting of the PSL editors. And all the other relays are the normally open relay can be used for tripping, opening, closing, or signaling. The operate of uh, each relay can be set from a list of the uh, operand and it can also be blocked by the setting of this uh, inhibit. The trip relay can also operate from any protecting element function is set to trip and when the element is operated. The behavior of the relay output can be modified by choosing the seven different uh, operating mode: the pick up, drop out, dwell, pause, pick up, drop out, straight through, and latching. And these modes can also be set in the PSL uh, editors. 
and we'll have a detailed information about this in the PSL training modules 106 later. So there are also 128 virtual outputs under the setting. We can rename them and uh, we can enable the events. And these are the programmed uh, virtual outputs in the PSL editor, which again will introduce them more in details in the modules 106. And last uh, output is the remote output. Here we can um, see the remote output is the list of the GGIO1 list and you can uh, give a name, remote output, or whatever it's, um, you want to rename it. And the indication is selecting the from a list of the operand. So this is the where you program that the GGL1, and this is the just uh, one part of the 61850 uh, goose message GGIO series and there will be more complete uh, introduction of all the GGIO series from GGIO 1 plus GGIO 2 until GGIO 6 they will be covered in the training modules 107 IEC 61850 and also the demonstration how to use this uh, GGIOs and that uh, that's an introduction of this uh, three outputs Relay, virtual, and the remote. Now let's talk about the flex logic operands. Um, the first time we saw this uh, list uh, is under the device disturbance re record, and uh, we s use this very often under the protection uh, element, the inhibit, so we can use this to block the protection element. Um, actually, there is over um, uh, 1,500 uh, operands. It depends on the order code. And I made this uh, uh, summarized uh, two pages of the operand. You can see they are belong to different categories. In the beginning, it's always the IOs, and it's always uh, on and off first. Then you got uh, any trip, alarm, pick up, et cetera, the operation element. Then you got the supervision of the device uh, errors, the, some kind of uh, failures, hardware, minor, major errors. And uh, from the I less than one, you get the a protection element. This is the 37 under current, and you got the IOC and TOC, um, all the protection element onto the frequency, uh, TFDT, the rate of change. Then you got to the supervision, uh, a monitoring operands for the trip uh, close coils circuit breaker, and there's also some uh, uh, pro protection element too. On the second page, we can see this uh, have a counters, alarm, uh, the group change, uh, pole discrepancy, uh, PD. You have uh, BF, breaker failures, um, the synchronous check, uh, CLRP, code load pickup. So we'll cover um, this uh, exact uh, operand when we come to the protection element 104 and 105. And there's a voltage element uh, under voltage, over voltage, uh, the, the monitoring again, the switch, and the lastly is the auto reclose. So knowing this uh, uh, sequence of this uh, totally more than uh, 1,500 operands is uh, uh, important, it will help you to quickly identify where is this uh, operand in the list. So you know this is the in the beginning part, like IOs, or like auto-reclose at the end. 
and uh, so you can quickly uh, find this in the list. So there's one way we can just uh, select this list. Like I said, if you choose the uh, inputs outputs, it's at the beginning of the list. If you know that you're uh, choosing the auto reclose, then you can just quickly go to the bottom and going backwards. So uh, depends on how you're familiar with this uh, sequence. This will help you to um, quickly find this list. There's another way we can uh, quickly enter the, the this setting is by using the type in directly. So once you're familiar with the name, so you can just uh, manually type in. So for example, um, if I, I'm setting to the auto reclose, but if I want to change the opto, I can click and drag. But if you know that is the opto input, you can just uh, manually type in opto input and see what, what, what options you have. It just come into the opto in, input one, two. Then under the opto category, you can just quickly find opto. If I want to change this opto to be a goose message, which is a RI remote input, that means I'm going to use this uh, remote in input category and you can see this uh, just jump into after the relay 12 of starting the IO series. So from here, you just jump into the beginning uh, of the remote input and you can just uh, select from here. And if you know all the whole name, you can just manually type in RI space one space ON and then you can just directly all just to type RI and you're very close to the that category of the settings. So there's two way uh, uh, you can enter, depends on which one you're familiar with, um, but knowing the sequence uh, will definitely help you to quickly find this uh, in the list. And uh, also uh, once you're familiar with the, the name, you can just uh, directly type in and that way maybe will be faster. Now let's recap what we have learned in this module. We started from the device setup, which covers most of the settings in the module. The real-time clock, security, communication, disturbance recorder, data logger, fault records, event data, flex state, front panel, resetting, installation, clear records. Especially we introduced the version uh, two, the new feature like the IEEE 1588, PTP settings, the new three Ethernet ports. Now you should know that the PTP of the P40 RGL enhanced does not support the VLAN configuration of the clock. You can set up the IP address or addresses with USB cable without rebooting the relay and many other settings under the device. In the system setup this session, we introduced the CT Ratio, VT ratio, power system settings, circuit breaker status inputs, 52A and 52B switches. We showed you how to calculate the VT ratios and secondary under Y and delta configuration. Also demonstrated how to use the user curve to create other relay manufacturers curve in P40 RGL enhanced. In the session of the inputs and outputs, we talked about the physical inputs and outputs, out, opto inputs and the relay contact. Opto inputs need to set up the DC voltage threshold and debounce time. The output can be operated by any trip function or any flex logic operand. Then the virtual inputs and virtual outputs. The virtual inputs need always to be enabled first before using them. Then more virtual outputs will be covered in the 106 PSL module. And same for the remote inputs and outputs. We showed them the relevant settings, but we'll cover more details in the 107 IEC 61850 module. In the FlexLogic operands section, we introduced the complete FlexLogic operands list and their category and the two ways to enter the operands in the menu. You can choose the way you preferred to do. And that concludes these training modules of the P40 RGL Enhanced 103 Generic Configuration. Thanks for watching and good luck with your studies.